You're gonna wanna watch to the end of this video and you'll never ask the question again as to whether or not you should have an LLC. Hey, you guys wanna see something freaky? Check this out. See the like on the computer monitor? Well, if I twist this polarizing filter thingy here, There's nothing on that monitor anymore. Today, we're talking about whether or not you should have an LLC to protect your real estate assets or multiple LLCs. And the reason we're making this video is because Bigger Pockets just made this video. And the reason I'm completely blown out is because these windows are open and we're actually not going to shoot this one in here. People said they want some running around. So we're going to go film it on the go. Folks, I get asked this question all of the time. Should I use an LLC to protect my real estate assets? And the question comes up so much in the YouTubes of the world that I thought I should really make a video about this. And then of course I saw Bigger <laughs> Then I saw Bigger Pockets made a video on it. I saw the title and I thought, all right, I guess I don't have to make that video. Well, after I watched the video, which I thought set some really great fundamentals out, I kind of got inspired to make this video to share not only some of my recommendations, but touch on some things that are pretty big that I think were missed. And don't get me wrong, I love bigger pockets. In fact, I had a live stream the other day when I was talking about the Federal Reserve, and I scheduled it for 11.15 because I wanted everybody to leave and go watch the Bigger Pockets podcast right afterwards. And besides, I think Bigger Pockets is doing a live in like 13 minutes, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go there at 12. And see, I think something that gets messed up all the time is every time I make a video like this, people are like, well, wait a minute, Kevin. You say you like these people, but then you're making an exposed video on them or something like that. Folks, I watch folks because I like them. I just add my own perspective and my own opinions. That's all. Obstacle detected. Yeah, I know. Story of my life. Let's start with why do people set up an LLC? And Brandon Turner over at Bigger Pockets did a great job at starting this discussion by saying people set up an LLC to protect their personal assets. Well, of course, an LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. And the idea is to provide you some form of the ability to limit your liability. Sadly, this is often a massive misnomer and there are much better ways to do it. Yet to me, the biggest pitfall and the biggest and best way to protect yourself wasn't mentioned in the Bigger Pockets video. So this video is going to be the same as the raw advice I give my clients when they ask me in person. Biggest fallacy number one when it comes to the LLC. Oh, and keep in mind, I'm not an attorney or a CPA, so you should consult one of those. And if you didn't already know that, then you might have bigger problems because I don't look like either of those, especially not recently. But see, the biggest fallacy of the LLC is when you consider the alter ego principle. The alter ego principle says that if you're simply creating an LLC to create a fictitious other persona to limit your liability, and you're the only member in the LLC, which is supposed to be a partnership, then judges might very likely be able to do what's known as piercing the corporate veil, which means your LLC protection does nothing because they basically consider it you. See, LLCs are designed to protect partners. That is when an LLC is actually formed as a partnership, all of the investing members are limited with their liability by the amount of money they invested into the partnership. But if you're simply creating an LLC to protect your own personal investments, and you or you and your spouse are the only members of the LLC, you might not be accomplishing anything that the judge actually looks at as if it's a partnership, which means your limited liability did not work. Look who's making an appearance in today's video. Now here's another thing Bigger Pockets didn't mention. They didn't talk about filing fees for the LLC. And this is separate from what you might pay for a corporate or partnership tax return, which Bigger Pockets did touch on. They did touch on that you might expect to pay about $2,000 if you actually run your LLC like a partnership, 
and you create a separate tax return for that LLC, which just means that individual partners just basically get their disbursement letter, a K-1, and that goes on their personal tax return. That's all the little complicated stuff you don't need to worry about, but know that in addition to that $2,000 you might pay for a corporate tax return or LLC partnership tax return, you generally have to pay filing fees. For example, in the state of California, you pay about $800 annually every single year, not just to create an LLC. So that means if you have one LLC and you put all of your properties into that one limited liability company, you're paying an additional $800 a year just to have the LLC plus whatever you need to pay to file a tax return for that LLC. Now, the tax return part is optional because if you don't have partners, you might not actually need a tax return for that LLC, and you need to verify that, but that's also another way to reiterate that you're just using the LLC as part of the alter ego principle, and a judge might pierce your corporate veil, and you might actually have no limited liability. Now look, I know it may look funny that I've got this one earpiece in thing here, but I gotta make sure the audio is not too crazy because I'm at the beach, and any time I've ever filmed at the beach before, I have utterly failed. No, by no means do I want anybody to think that I have any negative thoughts about Bigger Pockets at all. I love their podcast, I love the content they put out, but there's some things missed here. So in addition to the filing fee, here's something else that's extremely important when it comes to considering whether or not you should have an LLC. If you use an LLC, but you have one LLC, because you wanna save on the filing fees or the corporate tax return fees when you actually create a partnership, usually what people do is they put all of their properties in that one LLC. This could be like the Mickey Mouse Investment LLC, and they put every single property into that. Well, now what you've done is you've basically spread liability from one property to all of your investments. So you didn't actually protect them because they're all in the same entity. Same failure, you may as well not have the LLC to begin with. So then people make the argument, well, I'll just have a separate LLC for every single property. 123 Main Street will be 123 Main Street LLC. 23 Harvard Street will be 23 Harvard Street LLC. But then, now you have to ask yourself, what is it going to cost you to pay somebody to set up the LLC on all of these? every time you buy a property, and the extra deed fees to transfer the properties into these LLCs. What are the filing fees with the state to pull that off? And do you have to have separate returns for all of these different LLCs? All of a sudden, you're creating this paperwork nightmare to have separate LLCs for all these different properties. And still yet, you might be subject to the alter ego principle, unless you're paying somebody really well to make sure all your corporate minutes are in line and all of your documentation is perfect to make sure that nobody thinks this is just an alter ego for you. Yet, good luck convincing a judge of that because they know these games. So what other considerations are there? Well, I think it's really important to keep in mind that an LLC might do absolutely nothing for you unless you actually use it as a partnership. Obviously, check with an attorney and a CPA, but like people say, you could talk to 20 different CPAs and attorneys and end up with 20 different answers on different opinions. So what's the real solution then? What should you do? So here's the solution. This is my recommendation and this is what I do to protect myself from liability. Two things. Number one, and this is gonna sound basic, but so many people don't do it. Don't have crappy properties. Don't be a slumlord. If things are broken, if things are not to code, if things are not permitted, or things are not done properly, even if they're not permitted, things can still be done properly, of course, but purposefully you're not putting in the smoke detectors, you're not repairing the firewall, and you're just kind of leaving it as is, or the railing is loose, or the stairs are rotted, you're setting yourself up for the neck breaker. So start by investing the money into your property, which Putting money into the property not only helps increase the value of the property, which is something you don't get with insurance. You don't get any value back. You don't get to sell your property for more because you had a Cadillac insurance policy. They'll be more than happy to sell you the best policy possible. But if you spend the money on keeping the property fixed up, you can really help limit your liability. Now don't get me wrong, you could still have liability even if you have a nicely fixed up property. For example, somebody could still slip and fall 
because you've got beautiful high-end stuff and it was slippery and somebody slipped and fell and hurt themselves and then sued you for 500 grand, like in the Bigger Pockets example. And you as the owner are required to pay $500,000 out of pocket to the tenant. Now let's say you only had a basic insurance policy that only covered you up to $300,000 of loss. Now, in theory, you have an extra $200,000 of liability. Somebody might try to sue you and then garnish your wages and take your personal assets. Bigger Pockets makes the argument that if you have the LLC, you should be able to limit your losses just to whatever is in the LLC, which again is great if you put every property in theory into separate LLCs and nobody invokes the alter ego principle or no judge thinks of that, although they usually do. Somebody will find a hole in your legal argument. To me, what is a better option or a better idea than having individual Cadillac insurance plans for all of your rental properties? I think you have your general insurance plan for every single property and then you do what's called an umbrella policy to cover you beyond any additional losses that you may incur above and beyond your basic policies. Let's make an example. Let's say you have $300,000 insurance policies on all of your properties. Somebody sues you and wins a million dollars. Now, your $300,000 insurance plan is exhausted. You still have to come up with 700 grand. Well, if you have a $1 million umbrella policy that covers all of your policies, no matter which of your 10 properties the claim occurs on, it just sort of umbrella protects you, that $1 million policy should step in to cover the additional $700,000. Keep that in mind, should. Insurance is always going to look for loopholes, but insurance is a good idea, and it's usually not that expensive. In fact, here's a sample of what some prices might look like for separate insurance policies for umbrella policies from this renewal I got in the mail for personal umbrella policy insurance. Here's another thing to keep in mind. If you do have LLCs, there are actually different kinds of umbrella policies you might need. If you don't have LLCs or you just put properties into a trust like we do, you might just need a personal umbrella policy, which they're not that unaffordable. The rates are very reasonable. But as soon as you open up a business or create the appearance of a business via an LLC, which really, in my opinion at least, check this with a CPA obviously, doesn't really provide you any additional benefits than you would get otherwise on your Schedule E on your tax return by just owning these properties personally or in a trust, if you consider putting them into an LLC, you might have to look into commercial umbrella policy. And as with any kind of business, prices for any business product goes through the roof like three or fourfold. So now you have all these LLCs and you think, oh, I got a personal umbrella policy, but now they're businesses. So now you need a personal umbrella policy and you need a commercial umbrella policy. Guys, the fees are nuts if you do the LLCs. I mean, look, I could really be upsetting some people here, but I think it's a waste of money. And, and maybe I'm missing something. I mean, I'm, I'm not always right. I make mistakes and uh, I'm, I'm happy to admit to those. So if I'm wrong here, let me know. The last point that comes up is if you do use an LLC or you do transfer a property into a trust, should you be concerned that the bank will call your loan or make it due on sale basically because the bank says if you sell your property your loan becomes due and technically you sell it when you transfer it into a trust or an llc this is of course just my opinion as i could also be wrong but this is a pretty common practice so i wouldn't be so concerned with this to me i find that most banks have enough to deal with in terms of people who aren't making their payments either on time or at all. And the last thing they want to do is start worrying about people who are simply transferring their properties into a different title. Again, I could be totally wrong about that. And I do agree that it doesn't hurt to just get that in writing from your bank. So let's do a summary here. Let's talk about this in the big picture. If you want an LLC, you really need to spend money on the filing fees. You're probably gonna have to set this up as an actual partnership rather than just being an alter ego, making it look like a partnership. You're going to have to spend money on attorneys and CPAs to set this up properly. Make sure you're doing your partnership minutes and meeting notes and all that stuff correctly. And you're updating your filing statements every single year. If you put your properties into a different LLC, you pretty much have to pay these filing fees and all these paperwork fees over and over and over and over again. And if you use LLCs and you want to take advantage of umbrella insurance policies, you're usually looking at commercial umbrella insurance policies, which are even more expensive. Instead, maybe just have personal umbrella policies 
and take care of your properties. Don't let them turn into junkers. Obviously, there's a whole lot more we talked about in the video, but hopefully that gives you a good little takeaway that, sorry folks, I'm not a big fan of the LLC. Good luck out there.